I'm Dr. Carrie Horn, and you are listening to an excerpt from my book, A Soul Aligned, How God Heals His Creations. Theory Development. The adversary has been working on deceptions and delusions since the day he deceived Eve, and he has established many delusions and deceptions that we call scientific evidential truth today. One of the most insidious ways that he has infected our minds with his delusions is through the world's concepts of healing. There is increasing emphasis placed on treating the flesh in medicine and in mental health, even though God tells us that the origins are spiritual and even though when he was here, he healed via the spiritual realm. The adversary has infected our understanding of how to heal by distracting us away from that which God values most, our heart and spirit. God tells us to discipline our flesh, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, and that our minds and bodies should discipline to the heart and spirit he gave us, not the other way around. He said that if we live according to our flesh, that we will die, Romans 8, 13, both physically and spiritually. The adversary's constructed worldviews cause us to feel ashamed of what God values and accuse us of being foolish by very design. The adversary's world says, feelings are not fact. Don't dwell on your pain. Keep a stiff upper lip. Let go of the past. Don't cry. Grow up already. You're too sensitive. You're a wimp and much more. Science as a field really began with the teachings and philosophies of Aristotle. However, Darwin introduced a drastic shift from acknowledgement of our creator to absolute rejection of God and his sovereignty over our lives and the earth. This shift has largely influenced the way that we attempt to resolve issues such as emotional, spiritual, mental, and physical illness, plague, famine, war, disaster, and destruction. We prefer to explain away global catastrophe as global warming rather than what God has told us all along is inevitable judgment for disobedience. Darwin diverged from the fundamental truth of God as being sovereign over all by proposing that human life was a happenstance phenomenon and as a result of evolution. Darwin introduced such ideas as there were higher humans and lower humans based on their capacities to function in the world and survive, fitness, competition, and biological rationalizations of inequality. He utilized biological rationalizations of inequality in order to delineate the fundamental value of human beings, a teaching that is antithetical to the teachings of Jesus Christ, the creator of human beings. Christ taught that those who have been blessed by him with higher capacities, gifts, and status have been charged with authority to lead, share, and govern with justice, fairness, and mercy. Rather than live out the inherent spiritual responsibilities of the authority that God alone has placed man in, Darwin shifted the cultural agenda to that of the enemy to judge, oppress, and rule without mercy over those who are disadvantaged and lower in value, such as the poor and the sick. In fact, his push was to eliminate the the devalued altogether, setting a perfect stage for the Nazi movement. Darwin's cousin, Francis Galton, drawing upon social and political Darwinism, subsequently coined the concept of eugenics, used to justify Hitler's slaughter of Jews in World War II. Eugenics focused on encouraging the procreation of those who were considered fit, while prohibiting and even suggesting the sterilization of the unfit. The satanic spirit behind these scientific agendas is clear. These ideas were used to eliminate the need for reliance on the Almighty, to covet and usurp his authority through scientific knowledge, and to engineer a new truth that would later evolve into a legal requirement through a mandatory and corrupt education system, vaccinations, quote-unquote, health care. To say nothing of the fact that these fundamental ideologies have been used to justify annihilation of God's people, coercion, oppression, deprivation of fundamental human rights, and cancellation of those who refuse to conform to the false god facade of science. Paul warned us to be aware of the tactics of the enemy and to know that we are in a spiritual battle that is in the spiritual realm, not the natural realm, Ephesians 6, 12. Lest Satan should get an advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices, 2 Corinthians 2, 11. Remember the age-old tactics of the adversary to deflect blame accuse and distract us from knowing that he is behind all evil and pain. If he can cause us to believe that he does not even exist and that it is man who is to blame, 
then he can cause humanity to flail around, re-traumatize themselves and others, and never know what hit them or how to heal from it. The adversary through science has attempted to remove God, establish a counterfeit world gospel that disallows the acknowledgement of any principle that is not measurable or rational. This is convenient for the devil because he essentially is irrational and undefinable and can therefore hide cowardly behind the false truth that nothing exists which is not seen. To that end, God is also not definable, measurable, or rationally understood, and Newton's laws left no room for that which man could not define, measure, or rationally comprehend. We have reached a point in history in which any talk of God or the devil is immediately rebuked, with hostility no less. Many people no longer believe that God or the devil even exist, and thus have no defense or protection from the war that affects every area of our existence. Furthermore, when Freud began to define mental health, he dissolved our awareness of the very principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, schemes of the devil, and the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places that Paul told us to guard ourselves against with spiritual armor. Instead, Freud redefined Satan's strongholds and attacks as diagnostic categories of psychological complexes and neuroses. This placed the focus on evolution for genetic mutations and anomalies that required man's correction and blamed man for maladjustment. It eliminated personal accountability for sin and return to God, and it placed man's experts in a position of false gods on whom the sick should depend. This has further led to complicit acceptance of often nonsensical procedures with which break down the temple of God through medications, electroconvulsive therapy, and not to mention heretical and anti-biblical suggestions on how to improve mental health. No longer was our well-being a spiritual matter requiring return to God, but became a work of our own hands. The field of mental health has evolved over the years to implement treatments that frankly do not offer relief, including dangerous medications, electroconvulsive treatments to the brain to cause a person to forget, and therapies that do not address the true spiritual circumstances that affect soul sickness. The truth is that all sickness is soul sickness because we are a soul, not a fragmentation of mind or body. Thus, the very nature of mental health subsumes that we can address the mind separately from the rest of our design. This is a lie created by the enemy to keep us sick, compelled, self-loathing, re-traumatizing ourselves, and harming others. Lastly, modern mental health ideology blames the victim when they do not respond to treatments focused on a fragment of their design for being characterologically flawed and hopeless and psychosomatically inclined. On the contrary, God does not forsake his children, and neither should we. We need to seek God's perspective on healing. We have gotten too far from him and his counsel. God's healing gives peace, not unnecessary suffering. If you have enjoyed this reading, be sure to check out the Heart Known series workbook that is used in conjunction with A Soul Aligned. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below, and ring the bell icon for more videos like this. Thank you for listening, and God bless.